Welcome to the beginning of a nature-based study in cooperation. Over the next several weeks, we will look at four distinct social agreements, and over the weeks, we will use this study to inform our discussions in our guilds and in work group discussions. I will try to remove my opinions and biases and stick to sharing my observations and helping to make your observations a bit more keen. But this is a talent I'm still working on myself. First, however, I would like to invite you into an exercise and observation. I would like to share with you what I see in this landscape. What do you see? I see culture and I see changing. There is a distinct culture out there in the ocean and on the land. You can't just float around <laughs> in the streets and the trees and on top of the mountains. And you can't hold on to things in the ocean. There's nothing, nothing to ground yourself to and only the movement of life itself to trust. But what is all of this in between? In between I see social agreements. In between I see always changing. I invite you to inquire for a minute. The foundation of change in one word, which I will call trust. In order for two cultures, or two systems, or seven systems to change, there needs to be spaces where zones of trust can develop. When we humans collaborate and cooperate in our systems, we are designing change. And just like most cooperative human endeavors, we don't build shorelines. We build and design social agreements. But just like nature, the more we design for cooperation, the more space for diversity, inclusion, and innovation will develop and emerge. So let's pause and then I will introduce some governance and operations docs that I'm familiar with. We will review these over the next six weeks and take a journey together along the shoreline of decentralized autonomous organization. Let's take a deep dive into social agreements real quick using design, little design science and a little systems theory of change with, with myself, Ernest of Gaia, where we will be comparing and contrasting governance documents as well as learning some basic concepts from other human disciplines using nature as our model. This is called the box of allowable activism, where the dominant culture controls the social agreements of imperial civilization. In this system, property ownership equals and grants the rights to control over others, using the law creating in-group and out-group social dynamics. Added 
is the sphere of power to this box of allowable activism from which the rulers sit. There are cultural norms outside their control, but under the control of others. The ruling class operates mostly within their own rules, but there is so much competition for this position that there is need to operate at times outside their own law, for them anyways. Now we overlay this landscape with an organizational model that describes the underlying purpose of an organization. That aligns with the dominant culture, but that also demonstrates how there are areas of human activity outside the control of imperial civilization. Most of us are familiar and consider a business to be either, or organization, to be either for-profit or not-for-profit. But there's another way to look at organizations through a cooperative lens, where your goal is either to win for yourselves or to win for the benefit of others. Now, one more dimension, one last dimension that I want to add <laughs> is this rainbow of color that demonstrates the levels of autonomy that radiate out from the dominant culture. Essentially, can you opt in or out of this system? Do you have autonomy? Within the power structure, at one extreme end, you have slavery. As you move from the red to the orange to the yellow worlds to the blue and the violet worlds of tomorrow, your sense and actual agency of being an autonomous individual within society as a whole increases. Okay, so how can I apply this in my guild? Well, this can give you a, a few questions for deeper inquiry in the social agreements that you look at. Instead of asking, what is a decentralized autonomous organization? We can look at where our social agreement falls within this landscape and recognize that some social agreements are unspoken, but when it comes to putting things on chain, we are definitely talking about the spoken. So questions for deeper inquiry. What levels of maintenance are members able and willing to incur in order to decentralize power, in order to increase participation in social agreements? What are the expectations that come with membership and membership levels of participation. Organizations by default have operations. They are organizing around a purpose and are always moving towards that purpose. What are the minimum vile operations needed in your guild or work group in order to achieve the purpose of the group? participating in the social agreement that folks want to commit to pursuing. All right, so let's get started. So what are the documents we're going to look at in this video? We're going to look at the Mambo Dao Charter, the Education Guild, the Research Guild, the Dao Relationships Guild, and the Book Club which is about due for revision. We're also going to look at how to find social agreements of the organization within the DAO, and we're going to compare the beginnings of the social agreements, and I'm also going to suggest some homework for folks that are interested, is that after this video, you go and find the social agreements, and all the other 14 guilds of the DAO. And make sure to review and understand the purpose or mission of each guild. And when you do that, 
and you find some interesting things to share, come on over to the Education Guild, share what you've learned in the pool. Now, let's take a look at those documents. Now, all of the DAO's documentation starts and ends in Notion. <laughs> Notion is the truth of source at some state for all the projects and guilds within the DAO. You can see the DAO wiki is organized very simply into four categories being start here, DAO resources, governance, and then the home page of each guild. You can see in the education guild, it's organized into a few different sections and that the governance section is labeled clearly in the top middle of the page. It's broke down into four categories being the mission, vision, values, or the purpose of the guild, as well as the documentation on guild governance, with the next page being about members, and responsibilities, and expectations of membership, as well as a document describing the framework of work for work groups. We can see at the research guild that just below their administrative calendar on the right hand side is all dedicated towards governance. We have the vision, the mission, the purpose of the guild, its governance framework, the guild incentive structures, the roles, the scope, as well as the different policies with, that make up the governance of the guild. We also have a documentation looking towards the future goals of the guild. In the Dialationships Guild, we start with the presentation of our purpose and our services, and then we break the rest of the guild's information down into subcategories with the right-hand side dedicated to governance and operations, where we have a summary of our activity, a historical record of each season, as well as documentation on our proposal framework, guild roles, and election processes. We also have documentation on financial implications within the guild. This is usually used for budgeting purposes. And we also have documentation on what we consider success in our guild. And now we have the Mambo DAO, whose charter is a website itself. It is broken down into eight components, with the first component being the Genesis Social Agreement. Most guilds, their Genesis Social Agreement will date all the way back to Season 0 or 1, or in the case of PM Guild, I believe Season 4. We've broken our charter in addition down into seven categories after the Genesis Social Agreement, being the organizational details and how we report, the scope and purpose of our, of our project, our deliverables and timeline. We also have documentation on our governance structure, as well as how to get involved and details of how we communicate. And then we also have a database that helps us view and de describe our decision-making policies. And then we also have a page dedicated to documenting any changes that get made over time to our governance documentation. You can see in the book club, here is our Google Doc, uh, much easier to read than our Notion page. <laughs> Most guilds and projects have a, a Google Doc on their governance docs, which is usually in like a draft mode where people can comment and leave suggestions. You can see here that this is Book Club Governance Process version 1.5. 
And in our table of contents, you can see that we break this document down into our purpose, our background, as well as our decision-making policies and how our roles are structured. We are also a media node, so we've developed documentation on branding and what we consider to be success in our organization, as well as a description of the members involved in the book club. And this concludes my short little introduction, maybe the uh, snorkel gear <laughs> that we'll need over the next several weeks as we take this deep dive into social agreements, design science, and systems theory of change. Thanks for going bankless together.